Hey, welcome back, everybody. Welcome to The World Ends With You on Playframe. And this little bonus episode that we're going to do. We are going to read those secret reports that I talked about. First, though, I am a little curious what happens if I just hit continue, because I haven't actually tried that. Uh, game cleared. This proves that you've beaten the game. Nice work. You can now access the chapter selection uh, menu from the main menu. Oh, that's real nice. I appreciate that. Congratulations, you beat the game. This tale has now drawn to a close. If you'd like, you can revisit any part of the story. Just select a day from the chapter selection menu. All your items, pins, and other stats will be carried over. You can skip past cutscenes you've already seen by pressing the skip button. Delve into each chapter to unlock secret reports penned by... Well, you'll have to see for yourself. The reports flesh out the backstory for each day and, we hope, answer some of your lingering questions. Collect all the reports for one last surprise. We won't spoil it for you. Beating the game has also unlocked a side story, another day. Join the cast's alter egos in a zany romp through an alternate Shibuya. Let's dip into that. I don't think we're going to actually do that. I'm curious to get a taste of it, though, and to give you all a taste for it, in case any of you are interested in maybe uh, trying this game out for yourself. Okay, it's all you now. Pick a chapter, live a little. You can access the chapter selection menu via the main menu. That's the only way to get out of this room, got it? Good, tutorial box out. <laughs> cool. So, chapter- oh yeah, kind of never really occurred to me that this box was empty all the time. Uh, neat. Another day, this day ends with you. On a certain day at a certain time in a different world, this like totally really happened. My understanding is that this is a, uh, <laughs> like, non-canon goof of a thing, but, um, oh, this art's really cool. Secret Day X. I don't like the pins I'm seeing there. I'm curious what that is, too. Oh, yeah, I love this art here. This is great. Uh, complete the following to view this day's report. Be Okay, so, to view this day's report, collect the report for Beat Day 7, track down and eliminate all this chapter's pig noise symbols, get the girl's uniform with sweater, uh, and eliminate the ultimate enemy at the top of Pork City. So, yeah, this is all, these are a whole lot of chores I definitely don't feel like doing. I'm curious, though. The tale you are about to experience depicts a world entirely separate from that of the main story. Same station. Same crowds, too. Same noises. Same buildings zigzagging across the sky. Man, life is sweet. <laughs> Dear Lord, please let today be even sweeter than yesterday. Thanks. Peace. This is quite different. <laughs> there. Now today is totally gonna kick ass. Or... Or is it? Oh no. I feel my inner emo stirring. Must fight emo urges. Wait, I got it. I just need to focus on the light of my life. My beacon of hope. Yes, that'll pull me right out of this funk. Why? Because that light is... A trick of fate? A microcosm of my world? The meaning of life? It's my purpose! Ten pin slammer's my purpose! We're out. We're done. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Whoo! That was a close one. <laughs> uh, narrowly evaded disaster. Well, that's enough of that. <laughs> I think it's time to read these secret reports. I'm very... Very curious. Uh, well, let me go pull them up real fast and, uh, yeah, let's do this thing. Oh, and I want to give a special thank you to a YouTube channel, Virgo Agogo. Uh, they put up a video that has video footage of all of these secret reports, and I'm going to be using some screenshots from that in this section so that y'all can read along with me, because I know it can be hard for some folks to follow along if you're only able to listen and not read the text yourself. So big thank you to Virgo Agogo for putting that video up. I'm going to put a link to that video up there in the corner right now. Do me a favor and click on that and go give their video some likes from me, because that video has turned out to be a very helpful resource for this one, and I want to return the favor. Anyway. Okay, so it seems like these reports, like there's one report per day. Uh, but yeah, let's just, I guess, go down the list. First week, week one, cheeky week. Day one. As is common knowledge, all games in the UG take place under our supervision. However, this particular game is saddled with a nigh unbelievable set of extenuating circumstances, catching the attention of the higher plane. Thus, I shall be taking a more hands-on role this time, as detailed in this report. The core differences in this game are as follows. 1. Its role in plans for Shibuya's destruction. 2. 
the composer's absence from the UG, three, the resulting limitations to his powers, and four, the game being played by a proxy. The composer has informed me of two major points, that he plans to destroy the UG, but also that his final decision will hinge on the outcome of his game with the conductor. A provisional rule for this game requires the composer to vacate the underground. It is unprecedented for the composer to be absent during a game. I cannot predict what effect it may have. Furthermore, the composer must lower the frequency of his vibe to travel from the UG to the RG, inevitably curtailing his abilities. Lower the frequency of his vibe. <laughs> uh, anyway. This makes investigating the conductor and his strategy incredibly difficult, as the composer is still the only one who knows who and what I am. It means lingering in the UG to author reports carries a lethal risk. The greatest randomizer in the current game is the use of a hand-picked proxy to compete against the conductor in the composer's stead. No information on this person exists at present. While the situation seems dire, I believe the key to getting ahead of all this is at hand. You see, Time always builds upon the past. I've already located our key. It is a pin request from the conductor. Normally, the psych manifestations of pins are determined by one's imagination. Thus, by analyzing the pin, the user's imagination, or rather, their true intentions, are revealed. Unfortunately, this order came through the composer and never came into contact with the conductor. Thus, I could not use it to determine the nature of his imagination. I too have lowered my vibe to tune into the UG, limiting my abilities. However, at this stage, realizing that this pin holds the key is sufficient. The possibility of forestalling the plans for the UG's destruction remains the same. Alright, that was day one. Here is day two of Shiki Week. Shiki Week is fun to say. As the game was set to end, I felt an intense burst of soul, and at its source I found the composer's hand-picked proxy, one Neku Sakuraba. Let it be noted that once danger was passed, the soul he expelled rapidly tapered off. I shall define soul as it exists in the UG later. For now, let it suffice to say that it is the energy he bears within him. His unstable soul is the result of a rift between his body and emotional mind. This discord can be traced to a few causes. One, his dense and all-inclusive soul composition. Two, emotional confusion inhibiting the unity of his emotional self and physical body. And three, the exacerbation of that confusion by memory loss, due to his entry fee. Shibuya's fate may rest on how well he manages to stabilize his soul. To measure his stability, I gave him a harmonizer pin. It can only be used when he cooperates with his partner. Synchronizing with another hinges on his ability to first stabilize his own soul, thus successful use of the pin would indicate he has made progress on that front. The further he's able to push his and his partner's psych resonance through fusion, the greater his own internal stability will have become. The progress of his soul merits close observation henceforth. I am beginning to suspect, and maybe this is obvious, that the author of these reports is Mr. Hanakoma. It seems like. Day two is when we met him, yeah? Yeah, day one we... he teamed up with Shiki, they had their little battle, and Hanakoma came and saved them. Yeah, no, Hanakoma came in. That was day one. Hanakoma came in and stopped Neku from choking Shiki, and I think they met him on day two as well. Ah, it's been a while. <laughs> anyway, week one, day three. Allow me to redefine the composer's role. As I continue to observe the game's progress, I have a clear view of the enormous effect of the composer's absence. A clear definition of his duties are key to understanding the extent of this disruption. The composer holds absolute authority over the underground. By authority, I mean the right to determine rules. He is the only one who can change the composition of the UG, and the sole creator of this Shibuya. The underground Shibuya is created and organized by the composer's rules, which pit players against reapers in a struggle for survival. A new composer only arises when the previous one is defeated. The victor takes the victim's place. At this juncture, the new composer rewrites the rules of Yuji Shibuya. However, there being no composer at all is a different situation. It means rules that make up the UG are invalid. In other words, without a composer, the underground collapses. However, the composer's absence is still a secret. At present, only three people know. The composer himself, his opponent, the conductor, and the producer, me. The producer's role is that of a guardian over the game. For observation purposes, he must sometimes descend from the higher plane to the underground. 
While the producer is natively an entity from the higher plane, he can adjust the frequency of his vibe to visit the UG and lower planes. Uh, think of a radio. Going from station A to station UG simply requires tuning in to a different frequency. The producer has the power to contact any and all beings in the underground. However, he is strictly prohibited from revealing his identity in the UG. His existence endangers the stability of the rules and balance of the RG and the UG. Thus, the producer's identity must stay a secret from Reapers and players, not to mention those in the RG. He may freely contact only one person as the producer, and that is the composer. It, that's, it's gotta be Mr. Hanakoma. Cause like, he's there, he's important, he seems to have a good idea of what's going on, but he never lets you in on what he's doing. It's gotta be him. And maybe in the process of acquiring these reports, maybe that becomes obvious. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure there is a little bit of context missing by just going in and reading this, but by just going in and reading this, I'm saving myself dozens of hours, which, I don't know, seems pretty good. Week 1, Day 4 The UG exists as a separate plane where the composer can judge the worth of men. Within it are reapers and human players. It is infeasible for the composer to judge all of humanity by himself, so a filtering system utilizing the reapers was created. The reapers game. Reapers act as a test, weeding out unfit players. Upon becoming a reaper, one's physical body changes, gaining incredible strength and an extended lifespan. As reaper and player alike progress through the game, engaging in imagination-driven combat, their soul is refined. Soul is abstract matter revealed through our research into life and death, and a component in the makeup of the atmosphere, humans, will, thought, all phenomena. As reapers execute the game, they undergo a process of evolution, from grunts to officers to the composer. However, reapers that follow the ideal route are rare, and most are erased by players. Reaper or player, those erased within the game disperse the mind and spirit housed within their flesh in the form of soul. Thus, they are erased only from visible existence. Their soul persists in the UG, until gathered and tied together according to a new code. This new code is, essentially, imagination. Given sufficient imagination, any form is possible, be it a pin or a reaper. So is that what all the just hooded, faceless reapers are? Just the accumulated soul of former players and reapers just kind of taking human-esque form and continuing to act as reapers in the world. I could see that. I wonder if they're going to explain noise at some point. Anyway, moving on. Um, variations in this code cause the soul to manifest in different forms. In other words, humans, reapers, and noise oh, <laughs> are all entities formed of soul. The only difference is their code. And what are noise? Entities without conscious will, only the drive to multiply. Thus, they constantly thirst for soul, attacking players and possessing humans in the real ground. Soul consumed by noise is destroyed, even if the noise is erased. Thus, possessed humans often exhibit a rush of euphoria immediately after the noise is removed. Though untested, the same would likely hold were a player or a reaper possessed. This is interesting, and it is surprising how much of this they did not include in the plot of the main game. Or like, how much of this just playing the game will not teach you. It's interesting. Week 1, Day 5. The real ground and underground are planes of existence. Other planes exist as well. The one inhabited solely by noise, for example. Or our customary plane. The way they're describing all this, this very much sounds like the entire setting of The World Ends With You is basically a heaven, hell, and living plane <laughs> fight. And the UG is just like sort of a weird, if not hell, maybe just like a purgatory state, right? If that is not literally what they are driving at, it does seem like a pretty major influence at least. Anyway, the planes are stacked in parallel, although each exists at a different frequency vibe in tune with its inhabitants. Observing a lower plane from a higher plane is simple. Actual transplanar contact, whilst possible, is highly complex. The vibes of adjacent planes are closer, making passage between them comparatively easier. More distant planes show greater differences in vibe frequencies, and thus communion becomes more difficult. The UG exists just above the RG, allowing those in the UG to observe the RG, but not vice versa. Noise exists on a special plane that straddles both the RG and UG, enabling their interference in the affairs of both. When players come into contact with noise, they are drawn into the noise plane. In other words, players are forcibly tuned in to the noise plane. Conversely, there exists an even higher plane than the RG and the UG. That's where I'm from. 
the plane of the angels. Okay, so that's a little bit more on the nose then. <laughs> As in the RG and UG, angels have created a web of social schema to guide their activities. The role of producer is just one cog in the angel machine. Angel vibes are extremely high frequency. Not even the composer can catch them all. In actuality, he can pick up only that of the producer. As you can see, interplanar contact is beset by difficulty, but certain modes do exist for its realization. One is the modulator decal. Within its area of effect, players from the UG can manifest visibly in the RG and communicate with others there. Reapers and the composer can downtune their vibes at will. Near these decals, however, even their vibes will be forcibly adjusted to the lower frequency. Another mode, imprinting, requires no physical manifestation in the RG. Imprintees experience the conferred thoughts as bursts of inspiration. The reliability of these communiques thus depends upon the person receiving it. For example, successful communication with preoccupied people is unlikely. Furthermore, recipient interpretation of said inspiration colors the message, making imprinting unreliable at best. Reaper Creeper was created as a mode of popular communication between the planes. Modulating paralogos printed on paper allow for limited UG interaction with real ground objects. As those in the RG are unaware of players, they perceive the illusion of a coin moving by itself. It's fun them getting into the metaphysics of how all this works, even if ultimately that's not <laughs> like they're not answers we need, but they are kind of interesting, especially if you're really into this fiction. Week one, day six. I receive periodic communication from the composer. While we maintain contact, I'm prohibited from providing him with information for risk of unbalancing the game. I am permitted only to respond to his commissions for certain items, and even then I'm able to only create and deliver said items. The composer has requested increased phone functionality for use in the next game. Okay, it's definitely Mr. Hanakoma then. Cool. Confirmation. Today, the proxy's partner, one Shiki Misaki, freed herself from her defining value, envy. With this, the composer is convinced of the proxy's victory on the seventh day. His confidence arises because the proxy's intervention was indispensable in causing his partner's growth. It signals the proxy's departure from his obsessive self-actualization loop. Previously, even the composer was unsure of his proxy's capacity for growth. Normally, the composer possesses a certain degree of clairvoyant foresight. His current down-tuned state, however, limits his abilities, clouding his supertemporal vision. Though able to observe the UG from the real ground, he is otherwise saddled with limitations. For one, his outward appearance. He looks younger than he would at full vibe frequency within the UG. Fortunately, this prevents the Reapers from recognizing him as the composer. To begin with, the composer contacts Reapers only through the conductor, so most are unaware of what he looks like. Additionally, as the being in the underground with the highest vibe, the vibe is still, as a term, very amusing to me, as the being in the underground with the highest vibe, some lesser Reapers are incapable of perceiving him. The effects of down-tuning occur because the composer's vibe and the RG's frequency are substantially different. For Reapers, the down-tuning necessary to exist in the RG is significantly less, and thus effects less prominent changes. That said, it depends on the Reaper. At any rate, the effect is minimal, making Reapers much more frequent visitors to the real ground. Provided they complete their duties, Reapers may do as they wish in the RG, within certain accepted boundaries. Alright, week one, day seven. As the composer predicted, the proxy has won the game. So what happens to those who survive the week? Those whose imagination is less than outstanding are broken down into soul, while those with excellent imagination become reapers. The most talented of these may travel to the next plane, inhabited by us angels. A diligent reapers, too, may pass through the office of composer to ascend to the plane of angels. Now, a what if? This may sound odd, but one may also choose to be reincarnated. Well, the word reincarnation is not quite accurate, for the humans of the UG are not truly dead. They merely possess different soul code and have been tuned to a different plane. We angels do not consider it a loss if a talented player elects to return to the real ground, as their superior imagination will inspire other humans. Upon returning to life, the exceptional player's creative activities soon make their mark upon society. His art, music, and other output become a part of culture, spreading and persisting through time, refining people's imagination even without personal contact with the player. Now, certainly this requires time, but no one has ever accused angels of being in a hurry. The composer's absence during this particular game, however, means that reincarnation is not an option. Only the composer possesses the level of imagination necessary to reincarnate. It is beyond the conductor's means. 
The conductor continues to act as if the composer were present, but this farce can only continue for so long. I will be watching with great curiosity to see how the conductor responds once his ruse unravels. As I was busy writing reports, the boy in my custody, Beat, went missing. Beat had expressed curiosity in how noise was created, and perhaps he plans to ask a reaper. But even without specific instruction from them, he has the ability now. I gave him a pin filled with the special imagination required to create noise, and imprinted him with instructions for its use. This does not qualify as interference in the game. The information I gave him will have no impact on the game's results. It was merely a token of my esteem for his unflinching passion towards what he holds dear. Whether he uses this power, and how, is completely up to him. So is that to say that... Okay, so he... He did not give him the rhyme pin. He gave Beat the power to create that pin himself, I guess. Anyway, let's move on to week two, Joshua week. And day one of it. Here we go. These are longer than I expected. My voice is going to be very tired. As predicted by the composer, his proxy has entered the game a second time. The proxy has proven his aptitude and will be joined in the next game by the composer himself as his new partner. There are three reasons behind the composer's choice of actions. One, to ascertain the conductor's strategy. Two, to educate his proxy. And three, to protect him. With his return to the UG, the limits on the composer's abilities will be relaxed. However, using his abilities could reveal his identity. As such, he will need to continue to limit himself for a while longer. This presents a certain set of risks. The greatest risk, however, lies with the composer joining the proxy for this game. The composer's presence, his tremendously high vibe, will place a great deal of physical and psychological strain on the proxy. Furthermore, the proxy's victory in the previous game has won him back his memory. The self-actualization loop binding the proxy is thus stronger than ever. More deeply ensconced even than the envy cleared from Shiki in the previous game. There is a possibility of the proxy's soul destabilizing, negating its progress during the previous game. Slight problems also persist with the proxy's personality. How long will the proxy be able to bear being side by side with the composer? <laughs> it's a good question. The composer's very annoying. Day 2. Today, an alert was handed down. The discovery of a fallen angel. A fallen angel is one who has broke the angel's code, a criminal. Their crime? Revealing the secrets of Taboo Noise Refinery to the Game Master, Mina Mimoto. Mina Mimoto knows the composer's RG identity, secret even to the conductor, and has chased him to the real ground. The fallen angel may also have supplied him with this information. Mina Mimoto lusts to take the composer's place, and his potential to do so comes second only to that of the conductor. Despite being a complete outsider in the wager between composer and conductor, he stands to hinder the composer greatly. It's entirely possible Minamimoto may rise to the office of conductor before this wager has been decided. All eyes from the higher plane are on this game for the future of Shibuya. Should its results be invalidated by outside interference, the angel's disappointment would be vast. So, what is the fallen angel's goal? Dominion over the underground? Retribution against the angels? Whatever the case, we must carefully monitor Minamimoto's actions and stay vigilant against this fallen angel. I'm intrigued. No idea who that might be. What is the purpose of these games in general? Is it just angel entertainment, or is this, again, if we're treating this whole game as sort of a purgatory thing, a route by which uh, beings may slowly become worthy of ascending to the highest plane eventually if they prove themselves able? I wonder what this game is for. Uh, maybe one of these will get to it. I guess we'll find out. Day 3. I was finally able to hand over the phone tracking application the composer requested some time back. I informed the composer it was ready three days ago, but they apparently had no time to come pick it up. It just shows how carefully the proxy is planning each move. The application detects the conductor's imagination. With it, one can walk around Shibuya and piece together the conductor's strategy. At this point, even I cannot fathom the conductor's plan. I'll have to rely on the information gathered by the composer. While I wait for his findings, I will work on the composer's next order a second revision to the phone's functionality. Today also marks my first contact with the proxy since he formed a pact with the composer. He appears considerably wary of his partner at present time. As expected, the psychological strain is severe. So severe, in fact, that most players would be unable to continue. Right now, the only thing keeping the proxy in the game is his entry fee. At least his dangerously strained state of mind is acting to heighten his soul. I saw no sign of relapse or destabilization. Rather, the return of his memory seems to have yielded only positives. I look forward to watching the proxy's continued growth. 
Day 4 The composer's reports indicate rough going in his investigation. I suspect the limits upon his abilities. Meanwhile, Minamoto has not issued any missions. The Reaper elites must be alarmed as well. Perhaps this is more of the Fallen Angel's influence. As I've stated, Minamimoto is suspected of a liaison with a Fallen Angel. The Fallen Angel may have chosen Minamimoto for a few reasons. First, none desired the composer's office more. Minamimoto's obsession was great enough to compel him to pursue the composer into the real ground. Unlike simple Reapers, however, the composer's powers are not lost in the RG. I can just imagine the shock dawning on Minamimoto's face as I write this. Yes, the composer must down-tune the frequency of the real ground, limiting his powers. However, Minamimoto's in the same boat. As a result, the difference in their abilities remain unchanged. Thus, the assassination attempt failed. While Minamimoto's efforts were fruitless, they serve as ample proof of his convictions. The second reason the Fallen Angel may have targeted him is his lack of loyalty to the Reaper's organization and his preference for solo action. His distaste for cooperation meant little chance of him revealing the Fallen Angel's presence. The third reason is his consistently unconventional aesthetic. His bizarre actions regularly cause confusion among those around him. Even if the Fallen Angel were to urge him to do something out of the ordinary, that would be ordinary for him. No one would suspect a thing. This is why he is an ideal target for a Fallen Angel to work his agenda without raising suspicion. At least, it seems a logical conclusion. The question now is, why has Minamimoto abandoned the game, and what is he doing? I suspect that his only current objective is to take out the composer. If so, he is likely preparing for the seventh day and his opportunity to confront the players. Just what did the Fallen Angel tell Minamimoto? Perhaps no one will ever know. This Fallen Angel angle is definitely intriguing. I'm wondering if they're going to leave this super mysterious or if we're actually going to get to figure out <laughs> what's going on. Day 5. The proxy feels an affection for the art of the designer Cat, myself. As he was picked by the composer, this is hardly coincidence, it was an inevitability. Cat's creative works are embedded with command codes. His art acts as a medium for mass imprinting. The imprinting players use works only on an individual basis. However, through art, one can affect anyone who comes into contact with the work. I imbue my art with two command codes. The first is, enjoy the moment more. This strengthens the imagination. The proxy received this signal loud and clear, although past trauma precluded him from responding accordingly. The second code, gather, calls to those with strong imaginations, hence the inevitability. Why wouldn't the composer find his worthy proxy standing in front of my graffiti? A single reason exists for rigging my art in this way. The creation of the future requires imagination. My art is widely accepted in Shibuya. This proves that those with imaginations sufficient to create the future are gathering in the area. Shibuya's future is looking very bright. Day 6 I have finished Revision 2 of the phone tracking app, which allows it to detect the Shibuya River. The composer aims to use this device to convey the river's location to the proxy. Before passing that knowledge along, the composer needed to understand the conductor's plan. As of yesterday, he felt confident in his hypothesis. The composer has encountered red skull pins everywhere the detector had led, the same pins I created at the conductor's behest on the first day. As I suspected, they form a prime piece of his strategy. The imagination he has filled those pins with is the same as that in the player pin, imprinting. They are set apart, however, by a single major difference. The red skull pins are made to imprint targets with the conductor's will. Anyone wearing the red skull pin is dominated by the conductor's mind. The further the pins spread, the more people he controls. However, the red skull pins have penetrated less than half of Shibuya's real ground population in the last two weeks. At this rate, the conductor's strategy will end in failure. How does he intend to penetrate the rest of Shibuya? I'll be monitoring his actions closely. Day 7. The last day of week 2. The final day's mission came from the conductor. Eliminate Minamimoto. Unexpected as it was, tension ran high, but the composer's quick thinking saved the day. In the end, all went according to his plan, and he successfully guided the proxy on to the next game. His solution entailed first defeating Minamimoto, thereby ensuring the proxy's victory. Secondly, the composer pretended to be erased by Minamimoto while shielding the proxy. To accomplish this, he fled to a parallel world just before Minamimoto's final attack connected. The proxy survived the game alone, but was again unable to elect reincarnation due to the composer's illegal participation in the game. For better or worse, the game between the composer and conductor concludes in one week's time. The conductor's strategy may end in failure, but we will see. I need to keep a close eye on his future actions. All I can do is wait for the composer to inform me of which parallel world he escaped to.
this brings us to week three. Beat week. Day one. I've been patrolling Shibuya in pursuit of the conductor's strategy. While in Utagawa, I spotted Minamimoto's Taboo Noise Refinery Sigil. Several types of these sigils exist in various categories which we of the higher plane have classified. Not all of them, however, will work in the UG. Its vibe frequency is simply too low for them to translate properly. The sigil Minamimoto drew was one of the undecodable types. Was that a mistake on the Fallen Angel's part? Or was it a transcription error by Minamimoto? Either way, with that design, he stands little chance of reviving himself. However, Minamimoto is driven, and his imagination strong. Perhaps strong enough to make a taboo sigil work, even in the underground. If so, the specific result would be impossible to predict. Anything that might interfere with the composer and conductor's wager is to be avoided at any cost. I will personally neutralize Minamimoto's sigil. Oh, that explains why he went there. Okay, I get it. I get it. Angels may not interfere in the Reaper's game, but this contest will decide Shibuya's future. The higher plane cannot idly stand by. Meanwhile, the conductor has dealt a preemptive blow. The starting player count in this final game is one. I cannot be certain whether the conductor knows that Nekusakuraba is the proxy, but his severe restriction to the number of an entrance ensures player erasure. In this flagrant abuse of his privilege, he has eliminated the threat of the proxy. With the composer in a parallel world, the proxy's position is perilous. Still, as producer, I am bound by the rules. I can offer him no help. All I can do is guide him to the Shibuya River. Call it luck or fate. Even by himself, the proxy has managed to form a pact. He's partnered to Beat, now a Reaper, who is himself fixated on reaching the river. As such, guiding the proxy will require little work on my part. Still, I haven't uncovered the conductor's strategy for this final week. I can't afford to relax quite yet. Day 2. The conductor has used Beat's betrayal as an excuse to issue an emergency call. With it, the composer's rules for the UG are essentially suspended. After weeks of concealing the composer's absence, the conductor finally has absolute authority. At the same time, he's made red skull pens mandatory for all reapers. Now most of Shibuya has a red skull pen. The stage has been set for the conductor's counterattack. Furthermore, he's cordoned off each area of the UG with walls. I could leave the UG, elevate my vibe, and pass through them quite easily, but to what end? I'm bound to the UG, and thus my hands are tied. I cannot reach the composer, nor do I know in which parallel world he's hiding. For now, all I can do is use my second sight to watch the game's progress. Day 3. It's getting very interesting. Rather than head to the Shibuya River, the proxy has begun wandering the streets, apparently in pursuit of the Game Master. Konishi, this round's Game Master, seems mainly interested in saving her own skin. She appears a loyal follower of the Conductor, but the appearance of a promising candidate for Composer would quickly change her tune. At this point, she's been working hard to recover the Conductor's trust after her slip the first day. She has issued a single six-day mission, one that exploits Beat's greatest weakness, Rhyme. Her plan is to panic the pair into committing some fatal error while keeping watch from her front row seat within Beat's shadow. This serves both to restore her standing with the Conductor, and to avenge the blow to her pride. Beat's greatest desire is to bring her back to life. Even if revived though, Rhyme still lost the game. Her entry fee is non-refundable. I do not know what the girl's entry fee was, but a life without it, the thing she held most dear, would be filled with grief and hardship. But is the void in one's heart caused by loss never filled? I think it can be. It may take some time, but something else will come along to fill that empty space, so long as one enjoys the present. In other words, we needn't mourn the loss of that which we hold dear, if only more people realize this. The composer did not impose the entry fee upon players to cause them anguish. In experiencing life without the thing one most values, players are forced to re-examine just how crucial those things really are. The hope is that by the close of the game, players will be able to take a hard look at themselves and be able to take on the future with a new outlook on life. The entry fee exists to force players to see the truth about themselves. It is a test posed by the composer to spur players' self-enlightenment. This really does seem like just a very big purgatory limbo testing ground, doesn't it? Anyway, day four. The conductor has begun his work with the red skull pins. By bringing Shibuya's collective consciousness in line with his own, he hopes to accomplish his goal of rebuilding Shibuya. The conductor's seal is unparalleled among reapers. His strong presence was central to the composer's ability to govern Shibuya, an area considered exceptionally chaotic even among the higher plains denizens. 
that the composer would consent to base his plans for Shibuya's destruction on a game with the conductor shows his unwavering trust in his subordinate. The unification of minds is the natural state of the higher plane. Given time, it might happen throughout the underground. The current Yuji, however, is not ready. People have erected walls around their minds, dividing their collective consciousness. They coexist independently, like the cells that make up a single human being. While the player pins hold imagination strong enough to pass through those walls, the pin user's own barriers are strengthened. Were that not the case, the incoming flood of other minds could erode at the user's own consciousness. Consequently, those who hold player pins cannot be scanned. Why does individuality exist? This is something the conductor has overlooked. Everything that exists has a purpose. Obsessed with his egoistic protection of Shibuya, the conductor has blinded himself to the facts. With his blind ego funneled into everyone in Shibuya, the city's destruction is not far off. So long as there is individuality, it is impossible to fully eliminate loneliness. There is no such thing as a shared reality. Even people who believe they share a connection are not truly connected. They must actually make contact, clash, and learn about others through their foreignness. Differences should not be denied. They should be accepted and enjoyed. People must realize this if Shibuya is to be spared from destruction. Day 5 I have detected an energy spike here. It would seem Minamimoto has returned. I judged his revival unlikely after spotting his taboo refinery sigil on the first day, but it appears Minamimoto's imagination is much stronger than I'd anticipated. The fallen angel must have completed the array for him. A troubling thought. Who can say what impact this will have on the composer and the conductor's game? Minamimoto has one goal now, to find the composer and erase him. Minamimoto has been tracking the composer's movements. He must know that the composer frequents this cafe. Chances are he'll pay a visit himself. As for the composer, I have yet to receive any word from him. Could the composer's abilities now be so limited that he cannot even reach me? I may need to contact myself in the parallel worlds to help search for him. I'm sorry, what? Oh, good. Let me expand on the concept of parallel worlds. Thank you, I was about to ask. <laughs> in life, reality is made up of a continuous string of choices, and the consequences of those choices. Every time a choice is made, the option not selected branches off and exists as its own reality, a parallel world. Countless numbers of such parallel worlds exist within a single plane, be it the RG or the UG, and travel among them is possible through the use of imagination. Theoretically, anyone can jump to a parallel world, but penetrating the membrane between worlds requires uptuning one's vibe, and this limits the pool of beings able to make the trip. Additionally, stress caused by breaking down the barrier can pull down the traveler's base vibe. If the vibe dips, the frequency may be too low to pass through the barrier. In the worst cases, it may render the traveler unable to return to his or her own original world. Conversely, angels are beings meant to jump between worlds. Thus, such travel is a simple matter. Angels have a higher base vibe than the frequency of the underground, allowing them to leave the UG and then tune their vibe to that of the desired parallel world. Where are they going with this? Day 6 I have located the composer. He is in a world where Tin Pin Slammer, of all things, reigns supreme. I'm off to retrieve him. If that another day parallel side story non-canon world thing is the parallel universe that <laughs> uh, Hanakoma goes and retrieves Joshua from, then that is a very clever little slick way to uh, <laughs> tell your little sort of non-canon side story while still tying it into everything that's happening. That's very slick. <laughs> Clever. Minamimoto has definitely targeted this shop, and not with friendly intentions. It's essential that I leave here immediately. I will leave the key pin to the Shibuya River for the proxy. He should know what to do from there. Shibuya's fate has been placed in the proxy's hands. It's no longer safe for me in the UG. My work here is done. All that remains is to retrieve the composer from the parallel world and bring him back to this one. Day 7. The final day. The Composer defeated the Conductor. The Composer defeated the Proxy. However, he has stayed his decision to destroy Shibuya. It seems the course of the game has brought about a change of heart in the Composer. Yes, Shibuya persists, but it's no longer the same city as it was a month ago. In its stead, a completely new Shibuya has arisen. As the Composer has changed, so Shibuya itself has metamorphosed. 
One month previous, Shibuya was plagued with problems, dire enough to motivate the composer to destroy it. Today, Shibuya has lifted into what we angels believe to be the optimal parallel world. To complete this puzzle, all the pieces had to be set in their proper place. If even one was incorrect, the entire picture would be ruined. First, Rhyme's selfless display of kindness. Second, Higashizawa's bottomless career ambitions. Third, Konishi's heart of stone. And fourth, the conductor's wild actions born from overflowing love. All of these were necessary if Shibuya was to be born anew. There are no extra pieces, no irrelevant components. Accept society as an ever-changing thing and your mind will also become flexible. Individuals will link together and enact change throughout society. This is the only way to weather, no, to ride high upon the waves of the ever-changing world. It was no coincidence the composer opted for this simple method in the end. My gratitude goes out to you all. I greatly look forward to what this new Shibuya will become. Thank you. There is more. <laughs> All right, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, there's a secret report for the another day thing, the uh, the thing I've noped out of. I'm not going to play it. Let me really quick read a summary of what happens. Okay, actually, let me, before I even do that. If you've gone this far and you don't want to be spoiled on stuff that I'm not actually playing, because I know that it's more fun sometimes to see it, then I highly encourage going and watching another somebody else's playthrough or just go buy the game yourself. Go play through it and see all that stuff on your own. I am not going to do that, so... I am real curious to uh, find out some of the answers in here, and I'm going to go ahead and read ahead. If you're cool with that, then join me. If not, then thanks for watching, uh, <laughs> and y'all have a good one. But, okay, let me read a quick summary of what happens in Another Day. Okay, so I was going to read a summary of what happens in Another Day, but there's not really... <laughs> There's not really a series of events that happens in it. Apparently, it's just kind of a space for you to go and play around, interact with characters acting very differently from the way they did in the uh, normal world that we played through in the main game. And you could just play Tin Pin Slammer a whole lot if you want to. <laughs> Which doesn't sound super fun. You can also, like, take on, like, a boss rush sort of thing. Uh, it's There's not a whole lot really going on story-wise in another day, it turns out. It's just sort of uh, some silly fun. But... I am wondering what the secret report for that says. I bet, because I bet that actually does add to the story. Let's see. So, secret report 21 for another day. I entered the parallel world and contacted the composer. Okay, it is the parallel world. That's great. Unexpectedly, he seemed to be enjoying his stay. In fact, the reason he had not contacted me was because he was too busy playing Tin Pin. I made him promise to meet me at the Shibuya River. In the meantime, I need to hide out so as not to meet myself in this world. Usually, angels existing as multiple entities within the same world poses little problem. However, mine is a somewhat special case. You see... Oh, wow. Okay. You see, I am the fallen angel who taught Minamimoto how to refine taboo noise. Minamimoto owes his successful rebirth to the corrections I made to his flawed taboo refinery sigil. I must hide in Pork City for fear that my alternate self in this world may report me on sight. Minamimoto is my backup plan to ensure Shibuya's survival. If the composer does not change his mind, this unique city will be lost. I must prevent that at any cost. Thus, I've deemed it necessary to cross the boundaries angels usually respect. I happily accept the stigma of Fallen Angel for this cause. Well then, it's about time to meet him. After calling the composer and hearing his cheery voice, I feel as if my shadow falls even darker. But darkness has always been husband to light. I sincerely hope that someday my sins will be judged justified. I still hold faith that they will, now and forevermore. One last thing. To the composer's pick, Neku Sakuraba, the future you must choose is within you. I am glad to have had the chance to meet you. Ah, oh, producer and fallen angel both. Wow. Busy guy. I guess that's why we didn't run into him super often. Oh, that was fun. Now, I know that there is technically more still, because <laughs> this, this game just has a whole lot uh, beyond just the end credits of the game. Uh, there's like apparently a whole additional day that adds some sort of epilogue story and teases sequel stuff and, and all that. It's called like a new day uh, to access it. You've got to beat like some really hard bosses scattered across the game. This is stuff that I don't have it in me to do. But uh, if you want to check that out, I highly recommend picking this game up either on iOS or on Switch. Actually, if you're wanting to see that, you should definitely get it on Switch because I think that's the only place it exists. But uh, yeah, this has been fun. Like, it's even if it's not 100% my favorite game ever or anything, this has been really neat. And it's a cool little experience and worth trying out, I think. Anyway, 
Thank you all again so much for watching all this. I really hope you have enjoyed it, and I am very excited to see what you patrons pick for this next bonus playthrough. Y'all have yourselves a very good one. Take care and goodbye. <laughs>